Let's talk about the Crimson Tide because a lot of people believe that Alabama will not be the same without Nick Saban. And it's really crazy to think about because it's the first time in 17 years that he will not walk through that tunnel. And what a run that that man had with Alabama. He won six national championships in 17 years. That's a crazy thing to do. He's the best head coach in college of all time. Well, how will the team look underneath their brand new head coach and Kalen DeBoer? I believe that Kellen DeBoer is going to be an excellent head coach moving forward. They did lose a lot of big names to the NFL and to the transfer portal, and we're going to get into that. But if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button as well. This is my first time talking about college in a very long time. So if you want to see more of these videos, let me know in the comment section below. But let's start things off. Let's go back to last year. It was a very interesting season for Alabama because they were not the most dominant team early on. The offensive line had a lot of issues and they had a major quarterback decision to make as well. Who was going to be their quarterback moving forward? They had a five-man battle for the spot and the two best quarterbacks would be Ty Simpson and Jalen Milrow. Well, we all know right now, Jalen Milrow edged him out and he looked like one of the best quarterbacks in college. He had a phenomenal season and you expect for him to have another great season with his brand new head coach and Kalen. Kalen is coming over from Washington where he helped them make the national championship against Michigan. Yes, they did lose, but their offense was crazy. They had two great wide receivers and a great quarterback in Michael Penix Jr. And Michael Penix Jr. was a transfer. Kalen went in there and he helped develop him and he helped make him one of the best quarterbacks in college. So good to where he went in the first round to the Atlanta Falcons. You have a guy in Jalen Milrow. He may not be the passer that Michael Pennis Jr. is, and he is not, but he's more of an athlete than Michael Pennis Jr. He can run the football very well. He reminds me a lot of Jalen Hurts when he was here playing with Alabama before he transferred to OU. When I look at Jalen Milrow, he could take the offense to a different level, and he did that last season. He helped them get to the college football playoffs, and they would lose against Michigan due to a botch snap, and he wasn't able to go out there and score a touchdown. But he still left it all on the field. He's a great player to have. And they're going to build this offense around him. And like I mentioned earlier in the video. They lost some key pieces on the offensive end. Because it is Alabama. This is the same school that coached up Amari Cooper. Julio Jones. And some of the best wide receivers you see in the NFL today. So obviously they're going to be missing some guys. And you look at Jermaine Burton. He led the team in receiving yards. He's no longer here. He got drafted to the Cincinnati Bengals. They no longer have their number two wide receiver. Who led the who was second in leading the team in receiving yards. And Isaiah Bunn, he transferred to Texas, which really sucks because he's a great deep threat wide receiver. But I understand why he transferred to go to Texas, which is now a division rival of Alabama because they are now in the SEC with Oklahoma. And Texas went out there and they beat Alabama last season by double digits. They beat them by 10 points, 34 to 24. It's going to be very interesting to see what Quinn Ewers and that team can do moving forward. But Alabama, they lost those key pieces, but they have some key wide receivers that are still on the team and that they're bringing in. Their wide receivers are still an issue because they haven't been able to go out there and produce like a guy like an Isaiah Bunn or even a guy like Jermaine Burden. But you still have guys out there like Kobe Prentiss, who I believe is going to be a very good wide receiver. He may be their best wide receiver. They also have Jermaine Burden as well and Kendrick Law. And you have Kate Urban as well. Kate Odom as well, excuse me. So I do believe that they have key pieces on the wide receiving spots. Just give them time. It may take them a couple weeks to get acclimated in a brand new system. It may take Jalen Milrow a couple weeks to get acclimated in the system as well. Like I mentioned before, early last season, they were not a good football team like how the other Alabama football teams were. They were good for a regular college team, but it took them some time to go out there and figure things out, even underneath Coach Saban, because Jalen Milrow was their brand new quarterback. So just give it time. I know a lot of Alabama fans don't want to hear that. They want them to be dominant throughout the entire season. But some slip-ups are going to happen. You had this team go out there, and they were in the close game against Auburn last year. It came down to a crazy Hail Mary play. Isaiah Bond caught the ball to Jalen Milrow. Then you also saw some other tough games as well. They had a tough outing against USF. They did win that game, but Ty Simpson had to come in and replace Jalen Milrow, and they put Jalen Milrow back in the game. That's usually not what Bama goes through. They ended September being 4-1, and one, which is crazy for them. Those teams in the past, Alabama, they would not struggle like this. And if they come out struggling, it's okay. They're still going to make the college football playoffs, and they're still going to be a dangerous threat. 
with those pieces. The running back room is a bit different as well. Your leading rusher in Jace, he's no longer here. He got drafted by the Atlanta Falcons later in the NFL draft. Congratulations to him, by the way. But you still have guys on the team in the running back room that can give you good production. You have Jam Miller, who is fast. You also have Justice Haynes as well, who I believe have, has the most upside and who I believe is the best running back with the team. You can do the read option with him and Jalen Milrow and do the RPO to get the wide receivers open as well. I like the tight ends that they have. The offensive line is going to be key here. And their offensive line did look good in the spring game. The offensive line was a bit of an issue last year, but Caden Proctor, he's coming back. He's a very good left tackle. Tyler Booker is a very good left guard. You're bringing over Parker as well at the center position. He is a very good center. Very good, very agile, can pass protect. You're not going to have those situations like how you had last year, especially against Michigan. You're not going to get a bot snap coming from this kid. So I love to see that. And that's going to be the thing with Jalen Milrow. Can they buy him enough time and can they get downhill with him? The rest of the offensive line is solid as well. You have Jaden Roberts at the right guard position. And you have Elijah at the right tackle position as well. And their defense, it did take a hit. Not only did you lose some key pieces on the offensive end, you lost some key defensive guys as well. Terry and Arnold, who led this team in pass deflections and interceptions, he went to the NFL. He is now a cornerback for the Detroit Lions. He got drafted in the first round. You also lost one of the best safeties, in my opinion, the best safety in all of college football. And Caleb Downs, he's no longer here. He transferred to go to the Ohio State University, which really sucks because that kid, you can make the argument, was the best player in their secondary. And he's an electric punt returner as well. I love his game. If he was able to stay with Alabama, it would have been perfect. I understand why he transferred, but it really sucks to see that he transferred. And I wish him nothing but the best at Ohio State. But I do not believe that he's going to see the same success with Ohio State that he could have saw with Alabama. Because I believe that the culture with Alabama is just a little bit better than the Ohio State. No offense to those guys. I'm not the biggest fan of Ryan Day. I do believe that Ryan Day is a good coach. But I believe that this coaching staff right here that Alabama has can get the most out of that kid. But he's talented in his own right. They also lost Kool-Aid McKinstry as well. He got drafted by the New Orleans Saints, who was another good cornerback for the Crimson Tide. So you're going to have a lot of shifting movements here. A lot of shifting parts. The wide receiving room is a is in question, but I believe that you're better off there than you are in the secondary because you have a lot of young players in that secondary. You have Devontae Smith at the Husky position, Damani Jackson, he's going to be a very good cornerback, Deshaun Jones as well, how will he look at the left cornerback position? You have Malachi Moore at the free safety spot. I like his game a lot, and as far as the pass rushing situation, you're going to be very good. You have LT Overton, you have Jordan Renand as well. Damon Payne Jr. at the no sack position, the same with Tim Keenan the third, and Jahim Otis as well. And you have Quindarius Robinson at the wolf position. So you have a solid defense. It's just a secondary that bothers me because they're so young. They need more reps there. That's it. Besides that, Alabama is better than the majority of the teams in the SEC. Texas, they're a top team. They're going to be hard to beat. They beat them last year, but I believe right now that Bama can go out there and they can give them another fight. You have Georgia, who is always a tough team to beat since Kirby Smart became the head coach there. But Bama is right there with them in terms of talent. Their roster is crazy, but so is Alabama. You look at OU, I don't believe that Oklahoma can go out there and make some noise right now. I see a lot of Missouri fans coming out of nowhere and saying, hey, we have a good team. And they do. They're just not better than Alabama. And if anyone tells you that Missouri is better than Alabama, they need to go out there and get their head checked. I believe that Alabama will easily make the college football playoffs and they can easily win a national championship with this roster. This is the same team that had a lot of struggles early on the first three to four games and they still found a way to go out there and go to the Rose Bowl and they were in a close game against a national champion winner in Michigan. But let me know in the comment section below how do you guys feel about the Crimson Tide and can they replicate the success without Nick Saban? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, one each and every last one of you guys stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless. Peace.